it's Christina and we're talking test tips. Today we're going to talk about how your SAT is scored. So today we're going to talk about how the various pieces come together to make your total SAT score as well as how your math and your reading and language scores are calculated. We'll even talk about the essay section, how it's scored, and whether it impacts your total score. So when people ask you, what did you get on the SAT? They're usually asking for your total score, which is the two section scores added together, and it's a number between 400 and 1600. And if you wanna be more specific, you could say your math score or your reading writing score. And what the College Board does is it calculates these section scores by converting your raw score, which is the number of questions you got correct in the section, into a number between 200 and 800. So I might say I made a 1210 on the SAT with a 610 in math and a 600 in the reading and writing section. Now, without getting too into the weeds, each test is scored a bit differently. Some might say curved. <laughs> and so if you were to calculate your test score at home, say, on a practice test, you want to keep in mind that your true score would be about within 20 points of that score. So let's start by taking a closer look at the math score, which again is a score between 200 and 800. And there are two math sections on the SAT, right? 20 questions where you cannot use your calculator and 38 questions where you can. So you have 58 math questions total. And there's a really neat trick. You can take the number of questions you got correct. So let's say 35, and you can multiply that number by 10 which just means add a zero. So my 35 becomes 350. And then add 200. So my 350 becomes 550. So what this means is if you got 35 questions correct, you would have an approximate math section score of 550. Now, like I said before, each test has a slightly different conversion, but in order to get a nice general sense of the number of correct questions you need to get in order to earn that goal score, this is a pretty good way to approximate your math section score. Now we're gonna take a look at the evidence-based reading and writing section. So that's the official name for the reading and writing language section. And this score again is gonna be between 200 and 800. And the SAT uses two different conversion charts, right? For the reading section, the chart is gonna convert your raw score, number of questions correct out of 52, into a number between 10 and 40. And then, the writing language section is going to use a different chart to convert the number of questions you got correct out of 44, that raw score, into a converted score, a number between 10 and 40. Then the College Board takes those two numbers, adds them together, adds a zero, and that is how you get a score between 200 and 800. And one thing to keep in mind is that if you are very close to a perfect score in the reading section, but let's say you miss one or three questions, this is gonna reduce that overall evidence-based reading and writing section score by maybe 10 points for each missed question. But if you are close to a perfect score in the writing language section and you miss, say, about one to four questions, then that overall reading writing language score goes down 20 points per missed question. And this is why I say that the writing and language section of the SAT, which doesn't get talked about as much, can greatly affect your score. Doing well on this section is easy if you understand key grammar rules and it can greatly affect your score in a positive way. Now, you'll also get cross test scores from 10 to 40, and there's two of them. There's analysis in history and social studies and analysis in science. And these scores are based on questions that required you to read a passage 
or to understand and apply data in the areas of history, social studies, and science in order to answer questions that are in all of the sections, math, reading, and writing and language. Now, I wanna be very clear. It is important to be able to read history and science passages and to be able to interpret the data. But the only way that these cross test scores really matter to you is if they are low. So let's say that your analysis of science score is kind of low. So this could alert you to the fact that maybe you really did miss multiple reading comprehension questions on that science passage that you actually thought was kind of hard, or maybe your analysis and history and social studies score is low, then this would alert you to the fact that you maybe missed questions that asked you to review, understand, or apply data. Thus, if either cross-test score is low, then you need to practice reading passages that are history, social studies, or science passages, and you need to work on understanding tables and graphs. But other than letting you know if you are strong or weak with these types of passages or interpreting data, the cross-test scores are not very meaningful. So the SAT also has seven subscores, and those are scored from one to 15. And these subscores can help you better understand the types of questions you're getting correct or incorrect. And it's important to know that not all questions are a part of a subscore, and some questions are a part of more than one subscore. So to break it down in the reading and writing and language sections, there's two subscores. There's command of evidence. So these are the questions that ask you, which line best supports your answer to the previous question, right? Or any other questions where you must find evidence to support your answer. And then there's words in context. And so these are the questions that ask you the meaning of a word in context, or ask you to select the best word for a context. Yeah, so those are in the reading and the writing and language section. Additionally, in just the writing and language section, there are two other subscores. And most of the questions fall into one of these two, which is expression of ideas and standard English convention. So expression of ideas just means more about writing style, author's purpose, other rhetorical skills. And then standard English convention questions are those like grammar usage questions. So things like verb tense, commas, semicolons. In the math section, there are three subscores, heart of algebra, problem solving and data analysis, and passport to advanced math. So heart of algebra questions represent topics from algebra one and simpler geometry and numeracy questions. Problem solving and data analysis, these are gonna be multi-step word problems, central tendency like mean, median mode, simpler probability, and other questions that require you to interpret data and the functions that model that data. And lastly, passport to advanced math questions, those are gonna be the topics from algebra two, complex geometry, like trigonometry, and other complex equations. And so you can see how your subscores could definitely tell you what areas you need to practice before you take the SAT again. And as for that SAT essay section, so you want to remember this is optional and you should definitely look at the requirements of the schools, the colleges and universities in which you're considering applying before you decide whether you're gonna take the SAT with or without that essay section. So if you do decide to take the essay, then your essay will be graded by two different graders and you'll earn a score from two to eight in three categories reading, analysis, and writing. And that score, that essay score, does not affect your evidence-based reading and writing score, nor does it affect your overall total in any way. Well, that was a lot of information. So we also wrote a blog post about how your SAT is scored, which you can find at www.theolivebook.com. All right, happy practicing.